All right, in the last video, I showed you how to create an in-class assignment where the students submitted a Google link, a link to a Google Doc. This time, we're going to do an in-class assignment where the students submit a PDF as their assignment, you know, for their accountability piece. So let's get started on this. And if you're looking at the course, here it is. And I want to put that as in-class task in week one. So I'm going to turn on editing and I'm going to go over here, add an activity and I'm going to click on assignment. And right here, let's call it week one class task. All right. And then down here for the description, I'm just going to paste in this, this set of directions for that I want my students to, to follow. Step one, open this file and make your own copy. Okay, so what is that file? So here in my syllabus, here is the activity that the ki uh, students are actually gonna work on right here. So I'm gonna click share, grab my link. There it is, to the assignment itself. And I'm gonna go to eLearn and I'm gonna paste in that link right there. But I want it to be a active link. So I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna click the anchor or the link button and I'm gonna paste in the URL. Click open in new window and there's the link to that Google Doc, the assignment for the class task. Students are gonna click it. They're gonna make a copy. They're gonna discuss it. Then each student is gonna do their own work. Then the students are gonna save that Google Doc as a PDF and then submit the PDF below. Okay, so there's the, the flow, right, that I want my students to follow. It's a good idea that um, once you've decided on one system for students submitting their assignments, whether, like the previous video, the students are always submitting a Google link to a Google Doc, or if the students are always going to be uploading a PDF. It's always nice from a student perspective if it's cons consistent and it's the same system week after week after week. Alternating or when it's haphazardly determined each time, it gets a little confusing for students. So uh, you're going to have to decide, do you like the Google link idea or the PDF link idea? All right. So anyway, let's get started on this. And down here, uh, this is where we can choose when that assignment is available. I like everything to be always available with no cutoff dates. And then right here, uh, for submission type, I'm going to make sure I leave the online text unclicked and I want the file submissions clicked because this is going to allow students to upload the PDF, but I only want them to upload one PDF. I don't need 20 PDFs. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change that to just one PDF. Maximum size limit is perfectly fine. That one gig as the maximum size of their file. Now right here, I only want them to be able to upload a PDF. I don't want to deal with Excel files or Microsoft Word files or image files. I only want students to be allowed to upload a PDF. So I'm going to click choose and I'm going to get all of these accepted file types. And I'm going to look for uh, document files right here. And I'm going to expand that because I only want students to be able to upload a PDF. That's the only thing I want them to be able to upload. So I'm going to click Save Changes. And there it is, .pdf. I could have directly typed that in. I could have just done .pdf, and I would have been fine as well. And that's going to limit my students to only uploading PDFs. Whether they created it originally in Microsoft Word and then saved it as a PDF, or if they did it in Google Docs and then save it as a PDF, it doesn't matter. They're going to be only allowed, they're going to be limited to only uploading a PDF. Feedback types, in this case, I'm going to turn off feedback comments because I'm going to do all of my feedbacks directly annotating the PDF itself. Submission settings, uh, I'm going to leave everything blank or uh, as default. We're not going to be doing group stuff, so I'm going to leave that as no. Notifications, I don't want to be notified, so that's why these first two things are no's. But the second, the third thing is yes, because I want my students to be notified when they've received a grade. 
This is where I indicate how many points this assignment is worth. In this case, I'm going to change it to 10. I'm going to leave it as simple direct, although in a later video, if you're interested, I can show you how to use rubrics. Everything else I'm going to leave as uh, default, especially this grade category. I want straight points. Everything is uncategorized. And all these other ones I'm going to leave at the default setting. So I'm going to click Save and Return. And then I, as the teacher, I'm going to click on this just to make sure it looks good. Yep, looks good. This is what the students are going to see. And then down below, they are going to be able to upload their assignment. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like from a student point of view. So I'm going to grab my Firefox because this is my fake student. And I'm going to refresh that screen and I'm going to scroll down as the student. So here I am as the student and I as the student, you can see it up here. It says fake student. Here's my assignment. So I'm going to click on it and I can see the directions that I'm supposed to follow. And there is the Google Doc that I'm going to click on. I'm going to do the work and then I'm going to save it as a PDF. All right. Now I've got that already over here on my desktop right here. It says class assignments. And so now when I, as the student, am ready to upload, I'm going to click on add submission and I'm going to scroll down and it says right here, it's only going to accept a PDF. Now, if I try and upload the wrong file type, let's say an image, I can drag it over and it'll say, eh, this is an image. You can't upload that because it's only going to allow PDFs. So I, as the student, will upload a PDF. Just drag and drop. Super easy. And there it is. And I, as the student, can submit it. And I can now see that I have submitted my assignment. If I need to edit my submission, I can always do that right down here. So now let's see what this is going to look like from the teacher point of view. So I'm back as the teacher. And when I click on this week one class task, I can now see that I have one paper that needs grading. So I'm going to click view all submissions and I can I will get a class roster showing all of my students that um, need grading. And I'm just going to click on this grade button. So I'm going to click on the grade button. Now, if I don't see what I was expecting to see, it might be because my filter is turned on. Way up here in the upper right hand corner, it might show um, only assignments that have been granted an extension. Or it might show only assignments that require grading. And if nothing's showing up, maybe it's because there are no assignments that students have submitted that need uh, grading. Uh, I often do no filter because that'll show my entire class, students who have submitted something and students who have not submitted something. All right. So I'm looking at this fake student and I'm reading their their assignment and I can I can use these tools up here to comment so I can click this note button right here and I'll just draw a little one right here and I can put cute llama right here and then when I click off of it, it expands and constricts right and oh I mean I can draw pictures I can do whatever I want I can say um, you know did you answer this right here so I can do any of that with these annotation tools up here isn't that cool and then um, I think I can highlight too. Yep, that's a highlighter. Isn't that neat? Okay, so I've annotated it. I've done what I wanted to do. Oh, let's do uh, change the color. And I will do one last comment down here. Here are the final thoughts I have for your paper. Okay, boom, 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 boom as the teacher. And then when I click off of it, it disappears. All right, so I've annotated the assignment. I'm over here, I'm going to click uh, their score, give them a 10. I'm going to click Save Changes or Save and Show the Next Available Student. Uh, I've got it checked off right here so that the students will be notified when they receive a grade. I'll just click Save Changes, and I can now see that that student has been graded. It's right up here. It says Graded. Okay. 
So now let's take a look at what does this look like back from the, to the, from the student's perspective. So here I am as a student, and I'm gonna refresh my screen. Now I, as the student, can scroll down here. There's the assignment I submitted, but if I scroll further, I will see the feedback. And if I click this link right here, view, not this link, th th this link will download the file itself, the PDF. But if I click view annotated PDF, I as the student can now see what my teacher commented on. And if I mouse over it, I can see, I can expand those comments and I can see exactly what the teacher uh, wrote. And that is from the student point of view and that is your two methods for having students do in-class assignments and submitting their work. One, as a Google Doc. Two, uploading as a PDF.